with a price. But with a price. When I was in secondary school, I think social studies, there is a topic that we did not treat before we completed. The teacher told us to go and do our own research. If I'm not mistaken, it's, it's reproduction or reproductive, something like that. Which, in our minds, it is, we are going to talk about what? Sex. And that is where we will get the chance to ask unnecessary questions. So, we were fired up for that course, but our teacher was having his own idea. He treated all the topics there, but that one, no. Go and do your own research. Why am I saying that? When something is linked to desires, into bracket, sexual act, majority of us, our dopamine rises to the occasion. Because where the thing is heading towards is interesting, and we all want to hear. And that was a problem that Paul was having with the Corinthians. The Corinthians were holding on to certain ideology. Why? Because the Greeks, they are saying that when we talk of human being, it's two things, body and soul. What is important is the soul. But the body, no. It's not important. So that's why they have a proverb saying that the body is a tomb. So if a body is a tomb, and you look at tomb, what do we put inside? Something. So the soul is in what? A tomb. And they go ahead to explain that I am a poor soul shackled to a corpse. So they give much precedence to the soul, not the body. So if the soul is important and the body is not important, you can do whatever you want with the body. And that is what entered the people, the people of Corinth in their heads that I think that one is nice, so let us go there. So the desire, the sexual ideas were full in their heads and fornication was on the rise. Now Paul, when he was preaching, Paul was talking about Christian freedom. And you know, Greeks, they are very smart. They are philosophical. Logically, they are sound. So they will analyze whatever you say. And if you are saying that you are preaching a freedom of a Christian man, and you want man to be free, that means man can do whatever what he wants. But Paul was telling that, yes, I want man to be free. But that, free, that, the, that freedom that I'm talking about is not man has the whatever he likes to do, whatever he wants. No. The freedom that he needs for man is that man should be disciplined. And man should, be, should have what? Integrity. In whatever that word man does. But the current people were not in tune with that. They did not agree. They went ahead to probe much further. 
And what did they use? They used an analogy of food and stomach. That, you know that uh, our stomach, without food, we, it cannot do anything. We will die. So, the, if food is important to the stomach, stomach too is important for what? For the food. So, body, when we talk about body and soul, the body is made for what? Pleasures, instincts. It is what? The sexual act is made for it. That is the desire of the body. But Paul said that, yes, you people are right. But remember that food and stomach that you people are talking about will pass away. But the body, the personality, and your whole being will never pass away because man is in union with what? With God. And if you are in union with God and your body is a temple of God, it means that whatever opposite thing that you do against your body affects what? God. So that thing about hedonism, pleasure, you see I get them. Let us spoil there. Let us have fun. But Genesis 2, 24, stated clear that intercourse is between two people into one united body. Ideally, it's talking about what? Marriage. So, if somebody is taking the ideology that here yeah, we are talking about married couples, no. Married couples are inside. Battleless. We are inside. Our own is even what? Even worse. But Paul will probe much further with his letters. Paul was making a strong three points that man should look at it or woman should look at it. The three things are Christian integrity. A Christian must have what? An integrity. And self-control. Self-control and virtuous what? Living. So, all of us here, we are Christians. We should possess these qualities as individual. Some are on the view that, yeah, it's good, but we are talking about culture now. Especially some tribes in Ghana here. No, a man cannot stay with one woman. Because our culture says that we should marry two, three, four. Because we have the means. So let's go, let's look at our culture. And you see that the explanation what? Is clear. And it happens in the Catholic Church. When this gay issue cropped up, no. Africa, no, we will not accept, we will not accept. We agree, it's true, we will not accept. But can the church look at marriage also so that they allow us to take three or four wives? Europeans are fighting for gay marriage and so on. Africa too, we are fighting for what? Marriage three or four wives. When you send it there, they, too, they will not accept. They too, when they bring it here, we will not accept. But the holistic view is that that passes through and compass every religion that's Christianity is that avoid immorality in it matter or what manner or what forms avoid it and its character 
set limits and boundaries on one's rights. So when you are married, you have put a closure to promiscuity. If you are not married, you have put a closure to what? Promiscuity. You are entitled to have that affair when you are married. Because we talk, when we talk about sex, people think it's a normal thing. But it has spiritual connotations. You can meet a woman with unclean spirits, and that's your downfall. From hero to zero. So it is not a testing object. Now, if you want me to marry you, let us test it and see whether you are impotent and me too, I am, I, I, I am fetter. Let's test it and see. Yes, we will go ahead, we will test it. When there's pregnancy, no, I am not ready. Can we abort that? No, it's clear that it's not what? It's not a joke. Now, people will bring an argument that no, it's some certain situations that is happening to us. That's why we are entering into that kind of life. What are some? Some will say unemployment. Because I don't have job to do. That, that's why I am entering there. When I get job, I will stop. But the time that you get a job, maybe you have done 30 to 40 men. By the time you get a job, you have done to 30 or 40 women. And when you do something frequently, it, you become addicted to what? To that. So how possible is that you can stop that? Yes, I agree with you that unemployment can cause that. I agree. But is it everything that you have to get a government work? What is creativity that we are talking about? Let me pick one example. You have done agriculture, agronomy. Can't you go for a loan and get a land and create a farm? You are using your agriculture, this thing, I want to get a government work. And what government work? Opposite of what he, he or she has done. Agriculture, I want to work in a bank. How possible is that? There are some courses, yes, government work. But there are some, no, you have to strive hard. Because if you don't push hard, that is where we find ourselves in this kind of life. Unemployment is true, but it is not an excuse. I beg your pardon. It is not an excuse. Peer influence. I talk about groups in the church. Now, groups in the church has turned to a place of what? Dominion of what? Fornication. Fornication here, there, 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 everywhere. Ah, do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't have. Ah, you too. You don't know what's up. Ah, tell it, chick's day, chick's day. Okay, let's give it a try. Now we have started. When familiarity breeds contempt, lack of respect doesn't show there. Because the moment you get intimate with that lady who respects you the most, the day you finish, it's finished for you. Those who are married, sometimes your wife can stand in front of you and tell you something that you don't like. It's not because she doesn't respect you. Because of what? The intimacy that you people afford. So we are all familiar to what? Ourselves. So lack of respect will be there. When you say something, would they listen? They will not listen. And brothers and sisters, 
I'm saying that stop fornication. Meanwhile, they know that father, the girlfriend is here. Look, look at him. Look at father. You know that you are chilling with this lady. And he's here talking about what? Fornication. My respect of all. And some will go ahead, ah, poverty. Yes, it's true. But have you realized that poverty is a disease? Poverty is a disease. It is not the wish of God for you. So if you are in poverty, so the main solution is about what? Promiscuity? And some who, even married couple, my husband is not giving me what I want. That's why I am doing that. Hey, babe. Because your husband is giving you something that is not enough, is that the argument to go into that? Some of the married men are cheating. Yes. Even some of them cheated yesterday and they are here. Some of the women, they have done it. They are here. But have you thought of, if you are caught, won't it destroy your children? Because if the man catches you, it's finished. You have children. Have you seen the tendency of pleasure? What has caused in the house there? Broken home. Majority of them are that. And some... They don't, I'm talking about the couples. They are staying in the same room with their watch, but their watch are adults. Oh, Mira, let's do it. My husband, let's do it. It doesn't matter when he sees it, he's matured. I'm... Yes, we understand that you have a single room, but that thing is not a public domain. And when you are doing it, it enters what? Their head. And when they are doing it, Father, I think there's an evil spirit worrying my daughter, worrying my son. But have you forgotten what you did? Please. It's not everything that we spiritualize it. It's not everything that we spiritualize it. Some things are physical things that we need to deal with it. Because when fornication becomes additive, that person is possessed and having a marine spirit. Some spirit is marrying the person. So the person can never get a good husband or a good wife. That thing is there. But some have the voluntary and they are into it. Because when I'm saying that, when I talk, we talk about sex, adrenaline moves up. And everybody is fired up to listen to it. And it sounds good in our ears. But when it, you don't know that after that it brings pain. I think we should treat fornication as a pandemic. Because pandemic, we pay much attention to God, to that. So if we treat fornication as pandemic, wouldn't it work? It will work. But we normalize everything. But there are remedies. Don't say to yourself, hey, we are men, we are men. That's our life. Man, man must cheat. What if, if you go and attract some illnesses, diseases, and you come and infect your wife with it? Is that the certificate of fornication that you have brought to the house? To come and kill everybody in the house? Please. The sexual edges are there. I am a priest. I have said that no, I will not go into that. But that does not mean that my sexual drives are not there. But it is what? The remedy, one remedy that I'm using is what? Self-discipline. If you are not disciplined, that's it. 
Don't feel happy when you are surrounded by women. But you need to be very, very disciplined. My dear, yes, you are my friend. But our friendship is what? Mutual. Nothing else. Don't cross the boundaries. You set limit. And when you're able to set limit, it's not about coming to the tabernacle, St. Anthony, whatever it is, yeah, God, I want to stop that. And you think that that will stop. It will never stop. It's about you yourself taking your situation as a pandemic and treating it as how it is. Self-discipline. You need that. The ability to say no and yes. Some of the men or especially the men, when the women start putting their, their hands in your head, oh, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, I told you I don't like I don't. I don't want to do it. I told you. Uh, but you are standing there. How would it work? My friend, no. Walk out from my office. My friend, no. Don't come to me again. If you are coming to me with this kind of life, no. The ability to be strong and say no. Sometimes it's a Coca-Cola bottle shape standing in front of you, spotless lamp. That it is difficult for you to resist. But the ability, the ability, mantra, no. Walk out from my office. This person is good. Yes, come. The ability to say yes and no. The another one is Russia tankers. Alcohol. Russians are good in vodka. Russia tankers. Let's go and blow up our minds. Your friend will call you. This friend will call you. They will bring maybe one or two ladies. You get drunk. And alcohol also gives that kind of what? Drive. You are drunk. When it gets you, I did it under the influence of what? Alcohol. Yes, you lost the stability. But the mind is what? It's there. There's no way you get drunk and lose your mind. It means that you are getting to what? Madness. How can you get drunk and say, I have lost my, my memory? So when you are drinking, you didn't know that you have to take the drug and put it down. What was that? It's not the brain that gives you that instruction. Stay away from unnecessary drinking. You will drink, ah, and we, can, we lift you up. You can't even stand on your feet. And when that thing happens, won't you fall? You fall. Bad parenting. Parents will not sit down, their walls down, and teach them. I got up to this age, this man married me before I did that. Parents have left their walls. No sexual education. Live your life. Parents will not check the, excuse my language, the menstrual cycles of their daughters. Whether it's starting today, tomorrow, she doesn't know. And when something happens, because they get to a certain age, that drive will start. If, I'm not, if my science is still working, adolescent age, if I'm not wrong, the sexual drive will, will start. That is where you need to sit her down. It's not about threatening. It's about talking heart to heart with your child. 
You leave them. And peers influence. Where the group that she's joining, have you been there to check what is happening there? Go there. Let us not be like Greeks who gives much precedence to the soul rather than the body because God doesn't need the soul. God needs everything. He doesn't want to share. Parents be apt and doing. Take them. Send them to the bathhouse. Let me see. Take them. Send them to the bathhouse. I saw that with my mother was doing those things. Send them to the bathhouse. Check. Because she doesn't want any word. Disgrace. Because when they read that place, the sexual edges are there. But please, if you don't work on that, fornication becomes what? A hallmark of the day. Let us treat it as a pandemic. When COVID came, we were treating it all hands, all hands or what? On deck. Let us treat it as that. Paul makes his last comment. He said that God's spirit dwells in that. God's spirit is not dwelling in that body alone. The soul and the body. Because the body manifests the soul. I'm manifesting because there's a soul what? In me. So God dwells in that. Our body is a temple of God. Why is it a temple of God? Literally understanding. We treat church place different from other place. Why? We give church a certain pedestal, discipline and other things. That is how the body is. Treat it as that. Don't, I say you were bought with what? A price. I am not a machine. That when you feel that you want to come and urinate, you come. No. It's a temple of God. Let it be clean. Let it be dim. And that is what Paul is talking about. Our bodies are sacred. The best creation ever of God is human beings. So our body is what? It's sacred. Paul is insisting that though he is free to do anything, he will not let nothing master him. The free will is there. You can do whatever you want to do. But that does not give you the impetus to do whatever what you like. No. You can't. The free will doesn't make you what? Man free to what? To sin. But it makes man free not to sin. It is easier to allow a habit to master you. This kind of sexual drive is easier it has mastered some of us because we all want to be there. But when you have the power of God in you and you respect God, you give him all the reverence that he needed, you can overcome this kind of what? Habit. So that it doesn't become like, I have whatever I want to do. We are, that's a saying, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm a man. No. It's not that. You are free to do whatever you want to do. But no. The another one is we are not on our own. There is no certain in this world as a self-made man. We are not on our own. There is no certain in this world as a self-made man. Nobody created himself. Him or herself. Nobody. It is God who created you. 
So don't think you have the right. But think of that you have a debt to pay. Because God has what? Has created you. Your body does not belong to you because he created you. So you owe God. The owing that you owe God is that keeping yourself what? Clean. That is why in the first reading, someone will say, listen. The listening ear. What I'm saying, if you don't have the listening ear, it is here, it passes here and go. It will never work. And when you listen, it took a process. It doesn't come instant. So when you have that kind of issue, it will take you time to get away with it. You cannot just say, pronounce it in your mouth that I have stopped that. Never. It is what? In the process. You work on it what? To stop that. That is what Samuel really told him. Go back. Talk less. Listen more. If you talk less and listen more, that's where you're able to overcome what? Whatever and what fornication that we are in. 